Hi there, this is Brent Harris. I am a personal coach. And in this video, I want to do something a little bit special. What I want to do is I want to tell you a story about myself. I have been mostly avoiding doing this kind of thing. Um, mostly just because I feel like, you know, when I make videos like these, what I want to do is I want to speak about you and, and how to help you and, you know, kind of get you to where you're going. Uh, but what I realized is that it, it also might be helpful to just tell you a little bit about me and where I've come from. And uh, it also serves as an opportunity to perhaps be a little bit more vulnerable with you, which uh, I'll admit, and uh, it unnerves me slightly. And I, I, I would prefer to just uh, come off like, uh, you know, somebody who just like has like a bunch of answers and who's super wise and just, and I can kind of put up this front. Uh, but it might also be good just to kind of show you, um, tell you a little bit about my history and, um, and I want to do that today, especially because in the last 24 hours, I've gone through what I've considered to be like a really major development in terms of, uh, like I just did a whole bunch of healing on a, a very, very core wound of mine. And I'm really stoked about it. And it also serves as an illustration of all the different principles that I've been sharing with you over the last couple of videos, especially when it comes to, um, belief work and, um, and uh, kind of dissolving the ego and dissolving uh, a sense of separation or betterness than uh, other people, which is definitely something that I've had, as I'll describe now. So um, I, uh, when I look at my life, I kind of divide it into a, a few discrete chunks. Um, there is like kind of like the time up until grade eight, you know, when I was 13. And then there's a period of when I was 13 to about 24, 23, 24. And then there was the period up until about now about, so, you know, three major chunks. And, uh, and there was a very, a very pivotal moment, a very important, uh, event that happened to me around, uh, grade eight time, 13 years old, just prior to entering high school that really, shaped, it really helped shape the course of my life uh, ever since then. Um, also, uh, yeah, my, my cat's really active now, so we may hear from her a little bit today. That's totally cool, too. So what had happened was um, I had, uh, around grade five, I moved from um, one town to another here in Ontario. And, um, and I kind of entered into a, um... <sighs> one second, sorry. So I had moved to a, uh, a suburb and I moved into this like whole new class with a whole bunch of kids and, um, and, uh, and all of the, uh, all of the boys in my grade, they were, uh, of a kind of a traditional masculine bent. So, you know, it was just a lot of sports and a lot of, uh, hockey and a lot of basketball. And, uh, I was more of a weird kid. Uh, I was a little bit more outlandish. I, you know, I preferred a lot of music and drama and I was kind of like out there and, uh, and like the other, the other kids in my grade, they kind of liked me, but they kind of held me at a, something of a distance, you know, where I'd, I'd be permitted sometimes to hang out with them and I'd sometimes not be permitted. And I was, and uh, you know, if you've ever gone through adolescence yourself, you know that uh, belonging and being part of the group is very, very important, right? And so, um, but eventually, but I, but I, I was really, it's like so weird and, you know, I kind of got to this point in grade eight where like all of them kind of collectively decided, you know, uh, hey, you know, hey, Brent, we don't really like you anymore. You know, you are to be, you know, we're, you know, you're not part of this anymore. And so I was kind of um, in an organized, conscious way. I was kind of ostracized. I was kind of pushed uh, to the, the very boundary and I was kind of made to be like, you know, that kid in the corner. And um, it was very sad. It was very hard. It was a very traumatic time. And, uh, and I kind of, it sort of uh, launched me into this, um, you know, I, I got into corn and Slipknot and like a lot of like, kind of like a new metal, kind of like outcasty type music. And I kind of, you know, kind of went more in that direction. And then going into high school, uh, which uh, here in, in my country, you know, depending on where you're viewing from, it's like, you know, grade eight is the end of elementary school. And then grade nine is the beginning of high school, you know, secondary. And, um, and as I went into it, I kind of made this, this sort of decision on a unconscious and a conscious level that I would do whatever it would take to become, um, to become popular and to become charming and charismatic and to be cool and to win the respect of all of my male peers and to win the affections of the female peers. <sighs> Sorry. 
All right. If she still acts up, I'm going to put her in a different room. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, to win, you know, to win the affections of females and to win the respect of males. And that became the foremost, foremost priority in my life. That's all that mattered to me, period, period, period. And so, and so that became a, almost a decade, a, over a decade long study. I would just, uh, I would just, you know, continue to experiment and learn and just figure out how to, how to do this. And, uh, and I did accomplish that going into high school and then further into university, I became very, very popular, abundantly popular. And I was able to just go into parties and just galvanize them and just, you know, really, you know, bring all this great energy and bring all the fun in. And, um, and I enjoyed a, a lot of success. I enjoyed a lot of appreciation and, uh, and I was just, I was just generally loved wherever I went. And, uh, and so this kind of occurred up until when I wet, met my girlfriend, who would later become my wife. And, um, and then that, that was around the 23-year-old mark. And then kind of from there up until around the age of 28, 29, I discovered spirituality. And I started going very, very deep into that. And, um, and what had happened looking back on it now was that I, I had experienced such perfect, complete success on this, on the level of popularity and charm and appreciation, you know, being able to receive and offer appreciation that it just, it just became time for the next, the next level of my development was upon me. It was just time to develop into the next level. And so I, I discovered spirituality and woke up to it, just woke up to this idea of God, uh, which I was an atheist up until that point and it's spirits and angels and Zen and meditation and enlightenment and awakening. And all these concepts became very important to me. And I started reading and getting into that. And, uh, and eventually, um, uh, kind of having finished school and having, having finished, having completed this aspect of my life, um, my, my girlfriend and I, we decided to, for a couple other reasons as well, to leave Canada where we grew up and to go traveling. We left Canada for about three and a half years, almost four years, uh, went traveling through Europe and through Asia and teaching English. And, uh, and I used that as an opportunity to kind of go into my own spiritual search. And so as I did that, I discovered that I was, um, that I was, I, a lot of what I had constructed my persona around was false. I noticed with a, a lot of pain and a lot of shame and guilt that um, I was very false. I was just constructing a face, constructing a facade. And I was really, I was really, I was really, um, okay, I'm going to move her into another room. All right, one second. Okay, she's in another room now. I swear she's not usually like that. Um, yeah, so a lot of pain and a lot of just embarrassment about, oh my God, like, you know, I was, you know, really, all I, all I was doing ultimately was all these tools and techniques for making people think that I was cool and, and you know, charming and everything. It was, all, it was all manipulation on both gross and subtle levels. And I realized this all at once. And then, and then like, and then it was like, okay, well, like I can't, now that I realize that I can't really do this anymore. And so, and so oh, when the time came to return to Canada around uh, the age of um, 28 or so, 29 odd, I, I realized that it was, that I want, it was time to reintegrate into society, reintegrate into uh, Canada, into my life there and just kind of build a life for myself because I was just kind of traveling and kind of, I didn't really have a career or anything really to kind of like, you know, make money with and establish myself with as a human being in the world. Um, I wanted to do that, but I had no way, no way of being myself around people. And so that began this phase of social awkwardness. And so I spent years and years and years up until last week, really, just being socially awkward and really feeling uncomfortable around folks. And it was around that time that I really, really narrowed my social field so that I would have essentially like three friends, you know, three people that I'd ever go out, go and see. And, and I would always really just avoid crowds, avoid gatherings, avoid hanging out because I would, you know, if I would ever have to go to a party or a gathering on some level, it meant that I had to act like a person. 
and I, I wonder if you're going through this as well, because I think like I'm, I'm on Reddit a lot and I, and I, there's a lot of, you know, people kind of complaining that like, it's like, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to hang out. I don't know how to be a person. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know what's involved in being a regular human being so that you can just hang out on some level. I was always scared that like, if I would say, if I was hanging out with people, then I like I was always looking for cues from everybody else in terms of what to do and what to say and how to act so that I could I could help I could kind of give put people under the impression that I belong there I always felt like an outsider that if everybody fully realized the extent to which I'm an outsider that I'm foreign to you know say the situation then they would recognize it the way white blood cells recognize foreign bacteria and attack it, you know, and kind of get rid of it. It always felt like I was always on the verge of being discovered and being attacked and removed and ostracized the way I was in school. And so I carried that trauma, like, like I was realizing more and more that I was carrying that trauma. Um, it meant that whenever I was hanging out with like family or friends, I, I would only feel really comfortable as long as I was playing games, card games, or board games, because as long as we're doing that, there would be some kind of a frame that I would know what the fuck we're doing. And I would know how to, you know, I would know what to do and how to navigate. And I could just kind of relax. And as soon as the game was over, it's like, oh, you know, now we're back to hanging out. I don't know how to hang out. I don't know how to be a person. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. So this, this applied to pretty much everybody except for, except for my, uh, my girl, my wife, you know, who was my girlfriend, now my wife, like basically, you know, everybody else in my life, anybody, anybody, I would always have that basic fear of like being discovered as being an outsider. And, and so what I realized just this last week and, you know, honestly, just yesterday, what I realized is that on some level, I really accepted this idea that I don't belong, that I, that I am foreign to where I am, that I'm not native to you know, this planet even just, you know, like a, there was a part of me that was really convinced that I was some kind of an alien and, and to make it, you know, and what I had done was I had constructed so much of my identity out of this that like I even used it to feel like I was better than other people or like I used my separateness to kind of like, you know, all of us are unique and all of us are special. But I would there's a little part of me that really, really, really did believe that I was more unique and more special than everybody else. And so this belief was the cause of all of my strife and agony, but it was also, it was also how I made my, it was, I also got a little value out of it by really allowing myself to believe that I was special. So when it became clear, when all of this became clear, it became time to release this, that the, you know, the little, little paltry benefit that I got from believing that I was separate and better is really not worth all the strife and agony that I was going through whenever I'd freak out whenever it was time that I just had to hang out with people. And I, and I really wanted to resolve this. So, so it was time, it was time last night to go through, to really, to really release this idea that I internalized, that I don't belong, that I'm an outsider, that I'm not kin, that I'm, that I'm foreign to this life, to this world, to this society. And so uh, I used, and, and I, I continue to use uh, theta healing and also access consciousness. These are two healing modalities um, where um, there's no time to get into it now, but basically it'd be like everywhere in my psych, I would say everywhere in my psychology <sighs> that I, that I believe that I'm foreigner, that I don't belong, that I'm not, you know, that I'm, I don't, that I shouldn't be here, that I'm an outsider. I hereby destroy and uncreate this belief because it is ultimately a belief. And so I want to invite you, if on any level in your psychology, you believe you're an outsider, a foreigner, not kin, don't belong. And so you're just pretending to belong. Would you be ready now to destroy and uncreate that idea now? Yes or no? Good, bad, right, wrong, pock, pod, all nine shorts, boys and beyond. The breath always signals a movement of the energy. Not every single breath, but when a when like a, when a, a healing is followed by a breath of tremendous relief, that's how you know there's movement of, of mental blockages in your psychology. 
So, so I find myself now outside of that belief. I find myself ha having capitulated a big, big, big chapter in my own history of feeling like an outsider, feeling better as a result, but also feeling that pain and agony of not belonging. And I can even feel now as I imagine myself hanging out with different people, I, I feel like, oh yeah, like it's, it's cool. I can just be myself in different social situations. And, um, and so I wanted to share that with you. That's something that I've gone through. Um, yeah, I think that's all I got for you. I want to continue. I want to continue sharing stories like these as they occur to me. I, I find in my own life, I'm, I'm constantly releasing old faulty programming that allows me to serve you better and to be better for you and to help you with your own journey. I feel that a lot of us are awakening and really in this place where we're ready to just just drop tons and tons of old psychology so that we can become our very best selves. And, uh, and that is, again, the, uh, the purpose of these videos, this video and this channel. So that's it. That's all I got for you. Uh, thank you for listening. It's, uh, it's an honor that you would listen to this. And uh, I hope you have an amazing day. All right. Bye-bye.